I'm Olivia Otieno with you every Saturday from 10 a.m. And thank you to my woman in fashion today, Charity Kalui. Bit nowhere. K-E. Check them out on the gram. But something else you need to be checking out is Country Queen. Country Queen. Country Queen. I'm going to confess. I was going to watch it last night, but I think my husband is mad at me. I'm going to change password your Netflix. <laughs> eh? I'm going to change Netflix password. I'm now thinking, eh, is that a sign? Are we having an <laughs> argument? Eh? But you see, you got it because it's Kenya's first Netflix series. Yo, with me are actors Nini Washera and Melissa Kiplagat. Ladies, welcome to Double O Direct. Thank, Thank you. you. It's so nice. Like Nini, <laughs> the last time I called you, you told me you were farming. Yes. And I was like, this, this woman has exponential talent. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm an artist on land and in my acting. I'm just an artist. So, yes. So, for those who are out of the inner circle, uninitiated, or don't have the internet. Because, oh, something I did earlier today that was really amazing, and I think you're going to love this, mm -hmm. is I went on to my personal assistant, and I was talking to my personal assistant, and I was asking my personal assistant about movies that Nini Washera has been in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah? And I was asking, hey, Siri, name movies with Nini Washera. Nini Washera features Wingu Lamoto and Evanescent. Yes. yes yes it is known <laughs> the end, <laughs> the end. <laughs> but you know that's how you need more because like that cannot be it tell me tell me yes. for those who don't know give us an overview of who is Nini Washera I mean I've been in this industry as an actress um, or an actor I hate that word actress as an actor or a performing artist and a radio presenter started off at the Phoenix in 1996 um, performed there at the Phoenix, trained there with James Falkland, then got on TV in 2001 on Wingu Lamoto. No, actually, no, it was Dangerous Affair. <gasps> I was my Dangerous first Affair. film. Oh, and great. that was when I was just like, okay, I, I really enjoy the screen. And I had... Um, so, so many experiences after that on TV with Wingu Lamoto. Then there was um, Nairobi Law. Then there was Changes, season one and two. <gasps> Wait, mm. did you ever watch it? Changes? Yeah. Yes. I'm in it. I've never watched it. Are you serious? I'm your landlady. No, no. Don't laugh at me, Melissa. Don't laugh at me. Those were before the internet. Yes, it was oh. really hard. You had to have DSTV or a boyfriend who has DSTV. Yes. And I had a boyfriend who had DSTV. <laughs> I, clearly, so, yeah. I clearly had no boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Forget even one with DSTV. I clearly was single. Yeah. Can you not watch it now? I want to I really want to watch it. Because yeah. we're all in it. Jimmy Gathu, Farid yes. Kimani. Mm. Uh, Piero McKenna. I mean, a lot of uh, the cast was an ensemble cast like this as well. Yeah. But then there was Connor, which yes. was a telenovela after yes. that, which we did for a year. Uh -huh. And then I went off to Nigeria and did a bunch of movies and Desperate Housewives Africa. Wow. Then I came back and then I decided to go behind the scenes because mm. I really wanted to understand the process of filmmaking. Yes, because you're so a casting director I'm now. I'm a casting director. So as a casting director, I worked on Sensate, both season one and two. So every single Kenyan actor you see there, hello. Hey, <laughs> hello. recognize. You know? Yeah. And then I also played a, a role in, in um, Sensate season two, which was one of the most amazing things because Lana... Um, Wachowski came to me and she said, Nini, could you please not audition anybody else for that role? Because I think you're just wonderful for it. And, and like, look at that damn. voice. Look at <laughs> yeah. that voice. I feel like Lana's right here with us. You know? <laughs> and then after that, I did, I was um, the casting director. Oh, pause. For those who don't know, Lana Wachowski, uh, one half of the Wachowskis from The Matrix. Yeah. Just filling yes. you in because yeah. we're big fans. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> And then I did, um, after that, I did I did a lot of casting for a lot of commercials. Yes. But the next big film was Wanuri's film, Rafiki, oh, wow. which was banned I in Kenya, Wanuri. which was quite um, depressing for us because the story was a beautiful story. about mm. It was a coming on, of age story. Yes. And it was completely misinterpreted and completely misrepresented. Mm. And then you wonder when you have movies that have guns and you have movies that have killing mm. and all this stuff, are you encouraging it mm. or are you creating awareness about a thing that's in the country? So that ban was um, quite a damper for all of us on our our ability to express ourselves as artists mm. and then I did casting for Escape from Mogadishu which is a Korean film as well and then now Country Queen yeah and then Melissa's gonna say Country Queen Country, Country Queen, Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's like you should have started with me I know Olivia <laughs> you should have just started with me you should have started with me Nini always a pleasure to see you always a pleasure to interact with you I am super excited when Nini was like oh you know we're doing this net they bring can we say yes actually what's this queen thing that's what she asked me what is Country Queen I'm like Olivia seriously because <laughs> I, I, I gotta delete
deleted message from Nini Washera's WhatsApp, and I was like, Nini, Nini was Nini, Nini, are you, you in okay? her thoughts? <laughs> I are you about, okay? Uh, yeah, are you okay? Like, you know, people, uh, maybe she was in an attack somewhere and mm. the, the kidnapper deleted the message. I was like, Nini, are you okay? And he's like, yes! Nini's like thriving. She's not even talking about Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Melissa Kiplagat, welcome to Double yes, O Direct. thank you. Give us an overview. Um, oh, God, you really should have started with me. Uh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I've been acting since 2013. I started at Phoenix as well. Um, we, were all Phoenix. we were all at Phoenix. Yeah, so you were at Phoenix. I was at Phoenix oh. too. I was at Phoenix. Everyone who's anyone was at Phoenix. We were at Phoenix. Phoenix. Amen. Uh -huh. yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, so I did that. And then I started going to screen um, 2015. I did my master's in London in 2016, 2017 in acting as well. And then I came back and I've been training actors ever since, trying to pass on what I learned. Um, yeah, I've been doing screen and here's the highlight of my career, Country Queen. Love it. Yay! Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Spice. By actors from Kenya's first Netflix series. It's called Country Queen. The names are Nini Washera and Melissa Kiplagat. Give me an overview, Melissa, of your yes. character in this series. So I play Akisa. She's an event planner. Um, she had a really traumatic um, experience when she was growing up. She had a child very young and her parents took the child away. Um, so yeah, so she goes to Nairobi, um, builds a life there and the series is her going back home um, and kind of her, her two worlds clashing. She also has a little bit of a relationship with Nini's character's it's husband. Um, oh, so okay. that took a turn. Yeah, there's a little bit of spiciness in there as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really cool show and I really especially enjoy um, my my character's relationship with her mom who's played by Mumbi Kaigo as well. It's a really complex relationship. So yeah, it's a little bit about Akisa. Give me some background on you as Melissa because I know we spoke about mm. your acting yeah. which you know involves you studying in the UK getting your masters in acting coming sure. back here training a lot of talented Kenyan you know potential yeah. actors um, and now getting into the series but but who is Melissa well, I'm a new mommy. Oh, congratulations. Was, Welcome to the club. Woo, Welcome woo, to the club. Woo. Yeah. So I, I had a baby who was a few months old, actually, when we were shooting Country Queen. So, um, yeah. So I'm a mom. I'm an artist. Um, hopefully, kind of want to get into writing a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm a family girl. I'm, I'm very Where did much you grow a family up? girl. I grew up in Nairobi, but I did live on and off in the U.S. for a few years, hence hence, hence the accent. Um, yeah, so a few years in the U.S., but mostly mostly here. I'm a Kenyan girl. Outside I love of Embu. acting. Outside yeah. of acting and your love of Embu. Who am I? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. That's a difficult, That's a difficult one, right? question. I like dogs. <laughs> <laughs> like chocolate ice cream <laughs> I don't know yeah I love chocolate ice cream come on Nini uh, Nini was telling me she, was not, she doesn't have a sweet tooth no we cannot it's be wrong. friends we cannot it's be wrong. friends we cannot be friends we cannot be... okay we're friends ever uh -huh. <laughs> it's very wrong yeah but yeah I think for me as in I'm a family girl super super family girl and I love being a mommy excellent yeah. so we found this with your character what is it that Kenyans need to understand about the series why must they watch Country Queen because it's it's really relatable and I think that's what I really like about it. There's so many storylines. So there's someone. There's someone in that show that you're really going to resonate with. Um, and I think it's just amazing. for Ken It's a Kenyan story that was written by Kenyans. Um, it's not an adaptation from somewhere else. And for us to have a show that's going to be shown in 190 countries, as in I think Kenyans should watch what's going to be shown of them. Um, and Nini was actually saying yesterday, which I really agree on, um, the show really shows not just Nairobi, which I think is what is usually shown, but it shows the village. And it shows the village not in a way of, oh my gosh, it's poverty and we all want to leave, but like these really powerful, rich characters there who love being there and value the village life as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's all sides of Nairobi and it's, Stunning. Yeah. The views Josh, are stunning. we are not hitting out at you. Mm. We still have love for you and your Nairobi half-life. <laughs> We're just saying there are places outside of Nairobi. So what about yeah. you, Nini? Tell me about your character. Oh, Vivienne Sibala. I call mm. her the anti-queen. Yeah, she yeah. is indeed. Rich anti-queen vibes. I know. She's one of the most, um, she's one of the richest women in Kenya. Um, which is nothing like me. She's a ruthless <laughs> business <laughs> mogul, a mining <laughs> magnate. Yeah. And she discovers that there's gold in Silanga mm. and she is willing to just like destroy that whole village, take 
every single piece of land and start mining for gold. She's ruthless, she's callous, she's cold-hearted, but she also has a side of her that I feel is very vulnerable. And part of the reason why she has this insatiable thirst for power is because she wants to protect herself. I feel like maybe she was one of the th things I did with the character backstory was decide that she had quite a traumatic upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of men trying to control her life, her father. She was raised in a middle class family, but raised specifically to be married by a wealthy man. And um, I'm, ma I'm in an, a very abusive relationship in my first marriage. Mm -hmm. And that when my husband passes away, that is when I decide that I'm never going to be an underdog again. And so um, in this particular um, season of Country Queen, we um, meet Vivienne as her company is falling apart. And then she discovers this gold thread in Silanga. And she doesn't know that Silanga is um, Akisa's village, but she is willing at all costs to give up nothing until she acquires all that property and can mine for the gold she wants. Yeah, I was actually inspired by Isabel dos Santos. Oh, do you know, I was gonna, I was gonna say that. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say <laughs> that, you know, because yeah, you know, when, you, when you're talking about it, and, for those who are uninitiated, please, who is Isabel dos Santos? <laughs> she is the daughter of the um, last president of Angola, um, Jose dos Santos, and she is one of the wealthiest, actually the richest woman in Africa. Mm. But she grew rich off the economy, grew rich off, over the, of, um, through the people of Angola. She stole money. Mm. She stole. She was given lots of land and lots of property by her father. She was um, a CEO in lots of businesses and... Um, got into telecommunications, got into petroleum, got into gold mining. So she a bad, she a bad, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But she's so like calm and mm. unapologetic and so like sweet. And when you listen to her, you're like, she didn't steal from nobody. She doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> she doesn't sound what so evil. talking about it? But she is. Tell me yeah. about your journey, Melissa, to um, starring in Country Queen. Um, yeah, so there was an audition notice on a WhatsApp group, some of these actor WhatsApp groups. Um, I went to audition. It was a really interesting audition because there was a lot of improv, which is not something that we see a lot. Um, so I, rem I remember doing a lot of improv with Mumbi, who I was terrified of. <laughs> oh my God, I was so scared of her. Um, but she's, she's such a sweetheart. I was just intimidated. Um, yeah, and then I got the role. We did some acting workshops and stuff. Um, then we got on set for the pilot. The pilot we actually shot in January 2019. Um, yeah, and then there was like almost a two-year gap between now shooting the rest of the episodes, which we shot. How do you the keep it a secret? Like... That's the thing about me. I'm so porous. You know, how could you shoot a Netflix pilot in January of 2019? Well, it wasn't confirmed at that point that uh, it was yeah, Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, I think we, they used the pilot to now go and sell it to people. Oh, yes. Okay. That's better. Ooh, yes. The anxiety would have yes. killed me. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So, but by the time we were shooting, we kind of knew already that it was a Netflix thing. And, and we had an idea that it might be during the pilot as well. Um, but yeah, then we came back two years later. Um, some of us, a lot of us actually were new parents. We had quite a few new parents between that gap. Um, yeah, so we looked different, but you know, we had to adjust quickly. <laughs> um, but it was great. It was yeah. great. It was, it was an amazing shooting period. Spice. Livio, Tiano, this is a safe space for women where we only host women, play music by women. I'm dressed by a different woman in fashion every single week. And I get a whoop, 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 whoop. whoop. <laughs> Although us guys were dressed by Babu, so I don't know. That you know, counts, you know, girl. You know, There's a man in your studio right now. Babu yeah. is the equivalent of Snoop Dogg. I can always play a Snoop track or have designs and styling by yeah. Babu. I, I just, I think he's amazing. I think he's amazing. amazing. And it's so sad he can't dress you. You need to like change it. Like if you love women, then it's you can fantastic. dress me. I yeah. know. Because Babu loves the girls. And he you does. know what? He is so talented. Is so incredibly. Amazing. Incredibly. And so humble still. Yeah. 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 You all look amazing. So tell me, what does it mean for the industry getting a Netflix series from Kenya? I think it's an incredible opportunity to showcase our talent, our stories on a global stage. I'm actually surprised it's taken this long. I and know. then again, you guys, you know, COVID and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but what's even that? I don't mm -hmm. think um, Netflix had really like looked as to Kenya as a potential investment opportunity, and I think they have now, and they have they signed an MOU with the government in April, which means that for the next two years, there's going to be a lot of capacity building. There's going to be a lot of talent training and and a lot more productions. In fact, I hear there are two more productions going on. Yeah, I've heard about at least one. Yeah. Yeah, on Netflix this year. So the fact that they've um, Netflix has come in to Kenya and not um, 
necessarily as, as like a presence, like as an office or like a setup, but to produce more content means that first of all, we have to put our standards of production much higher. Yes. Actors, you, get, you need to get your stuff together. You need to get your training on. You need to be able to be com compared to artists or talent from other parts of the world. And I think we do already have an amazing, um, uh, like, just basket of like storytellers and talent in this country. But I think what Netflix is going to do for us for the next few years is going to take us to the next level. It's going to make us look and feel like a more professional shoot or a more professional production. We're going to make a lot more money. It's a global hopefully. platform. It At the end of the day, platform. it's a global platform. How many Korean movies have I been watching lately? I'm thinking, mm, I know. why am I watching these Korean movies? I need to be watching Kenyan ones. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So in that way that it's opened up the world for us because like I love Colombian and um, Mexican. Esmeralda. I, I'm, I'm like mujer. into like El Chapo. <laughs> yes. And you know, yeah. not, not Esmeralda, El Esmeralda. Chapo yeah. and like the marked heart stories like okay, that, like drama nice. thrillers. Yes. Um, which Queen is, of the South, you know, she could be exactly. a star. Exactly. Yes. 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 Queen of the East. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Exactly. So <laughs> yeah. stuff like that is more available to mm -hmm. us. I think we were so hooded by this idea that the way that Hollywood made movies was the only way to make movies. Yes. But now look at the um, amazing stuff that comes out of Korea. Look at the amazing stuff that comes out of South America as Turkey. well. Turkey. Uh, out of Turkey and also yeah. to be able to access Nigerian content that's yes. not like, you know, that's the kind... A, a yeah, higher quality. A, a much yeah. higher quality. <laughs> yes. And also to be... Uh, what I'd like to see happen actually is more of a unity in Africa. Mm -hmm. That we get a, a lot more co-productions between these countries that Netflix has a presence in. South Africa, South Nigeria, Africa, Kenya. Nigeria, yeah. Kenya, yes. Egypt as well. Mm -hmm. Like, but So that we stop being these like little islands of production units or industries mm -hmm. and come together and tell magical stories about Africa. So that's what I'm hoping that this does for our industry in Africa as a whole. That's yeah. incredible. What was your experience like, Melissa? I mean, this is one of your first big productions as an actor. Yes. What was uh, how long did shooting take, and what was it like for you being on set? Um, shooting, I guess, for the last year, um, the shoot itself was four months. Um, my days were a bit over a month worth. And like I said, I was a new mom, so it's a lot of pumping. I have a <laughs> lot of respect for mothers who go back to work, honestly. Um, so it was a little bit exhausting just because of that, and I was also working somewhere else as well. Um, but it was it was such a family. You know, the thing I loved about Country Queen is it really was the best of the best of every oh, yes. industry. The directors, the DOPs, the art department, everything. And so when you show up to set like you're never irritated by anyone not doing their job everyone was just so yes on it can be annoying yes. people who just don't do their job and yeah. it's impossible for you to do yours exactly. exactly but everyone was so on point so there was a lot of respect in the set um and people were really efficient and we formed a family because a lot of the shoot okay maybe not the nairobi part but a lot of the shoot in silanga which is machako's moranga we were staying on on site for about a month so we formed a little family as well which was really nice um yeah so it was it was great to work with the caliber of people that we were working with yeah. it was fantastic nini your experience because you've had so much on set experience already and yeah. you've been casting you know for several years now what was that like for you this was one of actually the most professional set I worked on. First of all, wow. there was no like overlapping of roles or responsibilities. Everybody knew what they were there to do and they were the top notch crew in the industry. It was Sanch was the DOP or or um, Drew was the DOP. It was like guys who have worked so hard in this industry to build a certain professional level and, and capacity for themselves. And so every person in the crew was so supportive. There was a glam team that I remember I'd walk onto um, the set and I would like be shaggy hair. I haven't <laughs> slept well. I just need some coffee. Leave me alone. And you go into the makeup room and Gendo starts working on me. And I used to close my eyes and I tell her, me when I open my eyes, all I want is Vivienne. And mm -hmm. let me tell you, she was one of the person who made this character come to life every day. Then you go into Kambua's and she's not stressing you with clothes that don't fit you. She's not asking you to try on this and this and this. She knows exactly what you have to put on. Vanessa and Kambua were like so patient with us because yeah. they're days that are terrible. They're days that are difficult. Then there was the directors working with Tosh ag and ag again, but I haven't worked with Tosh since changes and he's grown immensely as a director and Vinny Mbaya as well, who has such an amazing way with actors. Mm. And let me tell you, Kamau Wadongo as a producer, he's the best producer I've worked with in this Agreed. industry in Kenya because I've worked on international productions, but the, the caliber of crew and cast 
playing with actors who are at the same level as you so you're not feeling like you're carrying the scene yes. i've had experiences in this industry where i'm the only one who has the lines for the scene so what? i'm asking like yep. what the hell are we doing here <laughs> yeah. why is this person on set <laughs> then i'll say shoot me and i go home I'm mm. not going to wait for her to learn her lines, you know. So I'm known as a very dramatic person. But for me, I love the idea really? of, of, Mini of being dramatic. dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> what are we, what are we talking about? about? <laughs> yeah. But then on set, it's about professionalism. People mm. think that acting is easy. People think that you come into film if you have nothing to do with your mm. life. I get that as well when people mm. are asking for auditions. Nini, I'm a student in economics and I think I can be a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? You think this is a freaking joke? You got yeah. barked up the wrong yeah. street. <laughs> but it's yeah. just delete, delete, delete. If you're, if you're thinking you could be, or yeah. people who've never acted, and they mm. say, you know, even me, I'm an actor. And it's like, it's a profession, yeah. guys. Mm. There's a lot of training that goes into this. Mm. There's a lot of time, a lot of effort that goes into presenting characters. Watching shows does not make you an, an actor. actor. Amen. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's not a part-time gig for me. And I don't think anybody can do it well if it's a part-time gig. Yes. And I've seen it on set. Um, pretty girls are hired because they look good on screen, but they can't act for sure. You know? hey! <laughs> <laughs> and the thing with Country Queen is it just did not deal with mediocre. It did not deal with unprofessionalism. It yep. did not deal. If you couldn't hack it, get out. I love it. Parting words because we have Patricia Kihoro and Sharon Wunder. Oh! Patricia, <laughs> I haven't seen her in ages. <laughs> yes, they're coming in to take your hot seats. But tell me, what do you want listeners of double o direct to walk away with melissa well first of all watch the show if you haven't watched the show um let us know what you think six episodes um yes how long is an episode 50 yeah 45 about, 50 yeah, right, about an hour. So, mm -hmm. so yeah they're they're good size episodes um yeah and and just know as kenyans we have amazing stories and they're worth being told so keep telling your stories and the world is going to continue to see us yeah. i love it nini what about you what are some of your parting words to double o direct listeners i think that um country queen covers a lot of amazing themes yeah. of like what is historically a problem in our country corruption um exploitation leadership um communities and i think that p one of the things i'd like people to take out of the show is to start to have conversations around yes. the topics that come up on country queen and also to understand that the people of silanga had a say they came together and they made a difference and what if kenyans had that mindset about what we want how we want our country to run mm. how about we start having conversations around those topics and see if we can make some changes in this country but also enjoy the show please and tell everybody about it <laughs> everyone because we want a season two amen this is just for you <laughs> <laughs> Nini Washera, Melissa Kiplaga, it has been a pleasure. Enjoy your weekend. You know what we're going to do after? We're going to Netflix and show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs>